This time we're going to look at, as part of our kitchen remodel, how to deal with these drawers. I wanted to keep the drawers and reuse them, but I wanted to put a new front on it that would match the new cabinet doors I made. I was going to use the existing sliders that are already attached to the drawers, as well as the main drawer body itself. Just wanted to replace that front. So in this video, I'm going to show you how you can retrofit your existing drawers and add new life to them by putting a new false front on them. Stay tuned, here we go. So there's really no easy way I found to take these drawer fronts off these drawers. They're connected with a dovetail and it's particle board going into oak. Now comes the fun part. I get to use my pallet mallet. This is the, called the 30 inch persuader. Don't get to use it very much. I made this for a pallet challenge out of some oak pallets. Not a lot of call for a giant mallet like this, but in this case, I really have to get some force on these drawer fronts to break them loose. Let's see how many hits it takes. All right, here we go. Well, that wasn't bad. Two hits. It actually broke out pretty cleanly. That's pretty amazing if you think about it. This is some oak, and it busted out the oak before it busted out the particle board. Good job. So here you can see the dovetail in the particle board that held these drawer fronts on. The drawer front slid on that dovetail, which is a really strong connection to hold that on because as you're moving this drawer in and out and slamming it sometimes, it has a tendency to break off here. So what I need to do though is I need to cut that dovetail off and I'll remove this staple first and then I'm going to make a line along here so I can follow it with the bandsaw and cut this bottom edge off. They had this bottom edge in a groove that fit on the drawer front, but we're just gonna cut it all flush to make it easy for ourselves. Okay, so now we're gonna take it over to the bandsaw and I'm gonna cut off the front of that drawer so that it's nice and flush. find something that was a half inch that could fill the front of these drawers and I didn't want to use half inch plywood because I wanted it to match this kind of faux oak grain they have on here this these look like oak panels but they're actually just uh, particle board with a plastic type of oak veneer as I was trying to figure out what I was going to use I stumbled upon these half inch oak boards that came from these drawers out of a giant chest of drawers that I found on the side of the road out for the trash. So I have two more of those over here. So here's these giant drawers I found. And the reason I, I kept them is because they had solid oak panels on the sides and the back. So I figured I could use them for something. And in this case, this is gonna be perfect because I can cut these up and use that as the, the front panel that I need to fill in for those drawers. So this piece has a little bit of a bow in it right here. So I'll try to take the straightest piece I can out of it. I only need one that's three inches high, about three inches high. So I'll pick the straightest part I can, probably right out of here. It just seems to have a bow in this last um, piece that's glued to the rest. So I'll take a three inch strip out of here. <laughs> tight fit here, what I've been doing is this. I've been putting it in place, holding it there, and I need something for it to rest against, so I'm using a bench dog here. Like that. So that drawer's not going to go anywhere. Now I can apply some pressure back towards the drawer, and I can mark with my marking knife where I want those exactly to be cut. is much more accurate 
than if you try to measure it. Now I have a nice scribed line there and I can stay to the outside of that when I cut it. I'm going to cut it on the bandsaw and I found that that gives me a nice accurate cut that's going to fit nice and snug in here. Okay, let's see how we did with the fit. Here we go, no gaps in the side. Looks good. So a marking knife is definitely going to be a lot more accurate. I made this one out of an old Sawzall blade and a while ago I made a video on that. I'll put a, a little thing for you to click on there if you're interested in seeing that. But that has definitely come in handy for things like that. So I'm going to check and make sure that I have it nice and square and flush with the front. There we go, nice and strong, and now I'm ready for the front. Okay, so the next challenge is how do I center this drawer and make sure that it's going to be exactly the, the way the other one was? I could try to measure it, but that's not going to be very accurate. I want it to be exact. I don't want to have any issues when I slide that drawer in where it looks a little tilted. So I'm going to take the old drawer front and I'm going to use a combination square, and I'll put it against the old drawer front. This can go in and out. I'm going to slide it down to its level with the bottom of the drawer, which is where that groove starts. Once it's there, I'll just screw it in place, lock it there. It gives me a real easy way to transfer this line. Now all I have to do is transfer this line onto my, my piece. For this one, I know it's the bottom of the drawer line. I'm going to just put my pencil along the side and I'll just follow that along the edge all the way across. So I know that that's my bottom of the drawer. Now I just have to do the same things to the side. You can see on this one the sides are in a little bit further than the bottom is. So I'm going to have to reset the combination square for that depth. Now I can do the same thing here. That's the side. And I'll do that over here as well. Now that I have my corners established right here, I'm going to easily be able to line up this drawer now to attach the front, I'm going to attach it from behind so that you can't see the screws and I'm going to put it in three. So before we wrap this up, I'd encourage you to go back and check out the first video in this kitchen remodel series and that's how to build some simple shaker cabinet doors. So what I plan to do is match that style with the wider drawers and you can see one behind me right here. I didn't attach this one to the front yet. But I'm going to do the same, same thing basically that I'm showing you how to do with the skinnier ones. The skinnier ones didn't give me enough room to do this panel detail. So I have to go with this planer look for the upper drawers and then I have three lower deeper drawers that are going to get this panel detail that's that shaker style. So if you want to see how I did these just go back to the first video in the series that's how to build the kitchen cabinet doors and I use the same construction method for these. So if the way I designed these, this false front is really just going to be held on with these screws. So when you have the screw on like this, I picked three quarter inch screws. And when I did that, because I want to countersink them in here, I don't want them to be really seen. I want them flush. That means they're going to go down somewhere like that. And so if I countersink them the right depth, I'll have plenty of threads into this poplar. What comes in real handy with this is an adjustable countersink and you can drill the pilot hole and countersink all at the same time and you can control how deep you want that to go. This is just about 13 inches so the center here means that's going to be six and a half so I'll just make a mark at six, six and a half. These don't have to be perfect you're not going to see them they're inside so six and a half is right here somewhere in here I'm going to need a line six and a half and then um, split the difference between six and a half that would be three and a quarter. So three and a quarter right there. And three and a quarter this way. So again, this combination square, really invaluable for doing something quick like marking the exact same depth. So I have three 
the screws here, they're the exact same depth. I know that these are gonna have a pull, and the pull is gonna be like this. That's why I'm cho choosing to use three here, and then the pull will be here. 